artists, it's Mrs. RT. Today we are going to be talking about a bug's view or how an ant or a bug could see the world. So think about when you go outside, if you see flowers or grass, do they look really, really big or really, really small? And now think about it from an ant's point of view or any kind of bug's point of view. The grass to them might look like the size of a tree would to you. So here's one example that I made. You can see this little ant on the ground. And this is just regular grass, which to you might look really small, but to the ant, it would look really, really big. So we have an ant with the dirt on the ground, and you can see how big the leaves and the grass are that would be on the ground with the ant. So I'm gonna start with a story called The Tiny Seed by Eric Carle, and we'll see some different types of nature scenery and different flowers and plants. And while we're going through the story, think about if you were an ant or a ladybug or a caterpillar, any type of bug, what the world would look like to you. And then we will draw that. So this is the tiny seed. It is autumn. A strong wind is blowing. It blows flower seeds high in the air and carries them far across the land. One of the seeds is tiny smaller than any of the others. Will it be able to keep up with the others? And where are they all going? So this is our little tiny seed smaller than all the others. One of the seeds flies higher than the others. Up, up it goes. It flies too high and the sun's hot rays burn it up. But the tiny seed sails on with the others. Another seed lands on a tall icy mountain. The ice never melts and the seed cannot grow. The rest of the seeds fly on, but the tiny seed does not go as fast as the others. Now they fly over the ocean. One seed falls in the water and drowns. The others sail on in the wind, but the tiny seed does not go as high as the others. One seed drifts down to the desert. It is hot and dry. The seed cannot grow. Now the tiny seed is flying very low, but the wind pushes it on with the others. So here's our tiny seed still surviving all these different places that they fly through. Finally, the wind stops and the seeds fall gently down to the ground. A bird comes by and eats one seed. The tiny seed is not eaten. It is so small that the bird does not see it. Now it is winter. After their long trip, the seeds settle down. They look just as if they're going to sleep in the earth. Snow falls and covers them like a soft white blanket. A hungry mouse that lives on the ground eats the seeds for his lunch, but the tiny seed lays very still and the mouse does not see it. So our tiny seed is still surviving. Now it is spring. After a few months, the snow has melted. It is really spring. Birds fly by, the sun shines, and rain falls. The seeds grow so round and full that they start to burst open a little. Now, they are not seeds anymore. They are plants. First, they send roots down into the earth. Then their little stems and leaves begin to grow toward the sun and the air. There is another plant that grows much faster than the new seed, little seeds. It is a big fat weed. It takes all the sunlight and rain away from one of the smaller plants and that plant dies. The tiny seed hasn't begun to grow. Soon it will be too late, hurry. But finally, it too starts to grow into a plant. So now you can see our tiny seed is finally growing into a tiny plant. The warm weather brings the children out to play. They too have been waiting for the sun and springtime. One child does not see the plant and runs along and oh, he breaks one. Now it cannot grow anymore. The tiny plant that grew from the tiny seed is growing fast, but its neighbor grows even faster. Before the tiny seed has three leaves, the other plant has seven, and look, a bud, and now even a flower. 
But what is happening? There are footsteps. Then a shadow looms over them. Then a hand reaches down and breaks off the flower. A boy has picked the flower to give to a friend. And now it is summer. Now the tiny plant from the tiny seed is all alone. It grows on and on. It doesn't stop. The sun shines on and the rain waters it. It has many leaves. It grows taller and taller. It is taller than the people, taller than the trees. It is taller than the houses. And now a flower grows on it. People come from far and near to look at this flower. It is the tallest flower they have ever seen. It is a giant flower. So now our tiny seed that grew into a tiny plant is the tallest, most giant flower. And you can think about most of the flowers you've seen. If these are the people down here, usually a flower would only grow to about here. But maybe this is what it would look like from an ant or a ladybug's point of view. All summer long, the birds and butterflies come visiting. They have never seen such a big and beautiful flower. And now it is autumn again. The days grow shorter, the nights grow cooler and the wind carries yellow and red leaves past the flower. Some petals drop from the giant flower and they sail along the bright with the bright leaves over the land and down to the ground. The wind blows harder. The flower has lost almost all of its petals. It sways and bends away from the wind, but the wind grows stronger and shakes the flower. Once more, the wind shakes the flower and this time the flower seed pods open. Out come many tiny seeds that quickly sail off in the wind. And now our tiny seed that made a tiny plant that made a giant flower is starting the process all over again as the seeds leave to go on that journey and eventually they will grow their own flowers. So now I want you to pick a bug, any kind of bug that you want. Could be a butterfly, a bee, an ant, a ladybug, a caterpillar, a beetle. It's totally your choice. Pick your bug. We're going to draw that. Draw your bug on the bottom or wherever it should be. And then we'll draw the world that they live in. So I'm going to show you a few different examples of outlines of bugs. You can choose your own as well. If you wanted to draw a ladybug, you could start with this curve line and a line going across at the bottom. And draw a little circle for the head and the eye. And think about what the ladybug looks like. It has spots on its shell. So we could do spots of black and then you could color it in. And you don't have to copy these bugs that I'm drawing on the board. I'm just showing a few different examples. And then it's little a legs are going to be the letter L. So down and over just to make a few little legs. And if you wanted to make a beetle, I would start very similar to how we did this one here with a curved line and close it off. You can make its little legs. I did a little circle for the head and then the antennas or little pinchers that a beetle could have. And then lines to add detail to the shell. If you wanted to make a butterfly up in the sky, you could start with an oval circle with the, for the head. Two little lines up top for antennas. And then the big wings. Then you could add detail on the wings so that they are symmetrical. You can make them nice and colorful. And if you wanted to draw something like a spider, 
You could start with the circle for the body. Think about how many eyes and legs they have. Most spiders have eight eyes. And eight legs. So for the legs that go out and over. But remember, if yours looks different, that's okay. You just try your best. For this, you only need to have one bug, but if you want to do more, you can. I'm just showing a couple different examples here. Okay, so that's just a few examples. You could also try an ant, a caterpillar, a bee, any other type of bug that you want. And then when you're ready, after you have the bug, you can start to make the background and the scenery. So think about where the ground might be. Maybe they're standing on some dirt and you could color that in. And think about how tall the grass would be. If this is a little ladybug that's about this big, the grass would be really, really tall, probably all the way up to the top of the page. So I started just with lines like that and then colored them in. And some of them I outlined in black and then colored them in. And then some of them I just did with crayons. And think about maybe if there's a leaf, up, a flower up there for the butterfly. And if you wanted to make leaves, I just made a curved line up to a point and back down. So there are lots of different ways you can do this project, lots of different bugs you can use, and lots of different backgrounds that you could use. But I want you to keep in mind, think about what the world would look like from a bug's point of view. So get creative, you can draw your bug and your background and then fill it all in with color. And I can't wait to see what you make. I'll see you next time.